Greetings comrades, my name is Dragantles and this is another Church Council in a Nutshell video. So in today's episode we will be looking at the First Council of Constantinople and the church you see in the background is the Hagia Irene Church which is where the council took place. Now the First Council of Constantinople took place in Constantinople, obviously, in 381 AD. The Pope at the time was Pope St. Damasus I, who was Pope between 366 to 384 AD. And there were multiple presidents in this council. The first was Patriarch St. Miletius of Antioch, followed by Patriarch St. Gregor of, Na of Nazianzus of uh, Constantinople, then Patriarch St. Nectarius of Constantinople, who was overseen by Emperor Theodosius I, who was emperor between 379 to 395 AD. Now 150 bishops were invited, all of them were from the Eastern Churches, and the only representative of the Western Churches there was the Pope himself. And of those 150 bishops, only 114 were allowed to attend. And to give a background to this council, Orionism was unfortunately still around and needed to be dealt with properly. The role of the Holy Spirit needed to be defined. A couple of new heresies turned up, including Sabellianism and Apollinarism, and relating to the role of the Holy Spirit, it was, it was the heresy of Macedonianism. Some of the Eastern churches were breaking away from Nicene Christianity, and so they need to try and bring them back. And this was quite risky, because the city of Constantinople itself was strongly Orion. And the reason why 36 uh, bishops didn't attend this council is because they refused to sign the Nicene Creed, as defined from the previous Ecumenical Council, the First Council of Nicaea. They refused to sign the creed, and so they weren't allowed to enter. And so they tried to make their own ecumenical council, but it failed. Now to give some information concerning the heresies. So, we know what Arianism is. It's the heresy that says Jesus was not divine. He just had a human nature. He was created by God, and he isn't God. Macedonianism, or Pneumatomachianism, is a heresy that denies the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Sabellianism says that... The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are not three separate persons of the Holy Trinity, but three different modes. And Apollinarism said that Jesus had a divine mind in the human body. And I will explain why there were several presidents in the Second Medical Council. First was the Timulicious of Antioch. However, however, he died shortly after the council convened. And so Saint Gregory took over. He was, he was voting here and he took over. However, after Saint Gregory took over the council, the Egyptian Macedonian bishops arrived and they did not like uh, him very much. They called his election inv invalid and refused to recognize him as the head of the council. So in Gregory, after seeing the chaos that his presence was causing, decided to resign from his position as head of the council and then they elected uh, Saint Nectarius, who at that point in time was an unbaptized civil official. He was chosen to be the presider of the council. Now not much actually happened in this council otherwise, which is why I'm going to explain what the canons were that came out of this. There were many, and one that was quite controversial, but significant, you'll see. The first canon condemned the heresies of Arianism, Macedonianism, Apollinarism, and Sabellianism. The second council renewed the Nicene legislation, imposing upon bishops the observance of diocesan and patriarchal limits. The third canon said that the bishop, and this is the controversial one, said that the bishop of Constantinople is highest among equals after Rome. The ancient churches would be Rome, Alexandria, Antioch, Jerusalem, and now Constantinople. And so Rome was automatically the, the higher than all of them, because that's where the Pope was. And so according to this canon, Constantinople would be, would be seen second after Rome. The fourth canon said that the consecration of Maximus as Patriarch of Constantinople was invalid. And so this canon was meant to effectively warn all of... Maximus's fellow conspirators and supporters in Egypt. Now, the next few canons may not be actually passed during this council, but possibly the following year. The fifth canon concerned a tome of the Western bishops. The sixth canon limited the ability to accuse the bishops of wrongdoing. While it, it would be written in 382 AD and only passed at the, Qu the Quinisext Council of 692 AD, so that's definitely quite a postponement. And seventh canon con were concerned procedures for accepting certain heretics back into the church. And the reason why this was important is because even after all that Arias had caused, all the, all the chaos that Arias had caused in Europe and in the empire with his heresies, he was still allowed back into the empire after Eusebius, his friend Eusebius, 
interceded for him before the emperor and so he pretended to write follow to write to agree to the Nicene Creed and he came back and started causing her, uh, trouble again and so this is basically meant to stop a repeat of that happening. Now, the results of this council well the biggest one was the completion was almost near completion of the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed. If you read the first Nicene Creed compare and compare it to the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed you'll see that the that the later one is definitely a lot bigger and it's specifically taught defines the role of the Holy Spirit in relation to the rest of the Holy Trinity and this is near identical to the Nicene Creed that we say today. All that needs to be left was adding in the Filioque to basically say the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, which would of course trouble the East Orthodox churches, but that's, that's for later. Almost finishing the definition of the Holy Trinity, all the heresies concerning the Holy Trinity were had been targeted and re rebuked now, and from this point on, Arianism would actually start weakening. Now, the reason why the Third Canon was so controversial, you see, the problem with declaring the Church of Constantinople as high small evils after Rome is its age. And Constantinople at this point in time was around 50 years old or so. Whereas the churches of like Alexandria and Antioch, they were hundreds of years old. I mean, Jerusalem had a special status because it was the first church and Rome was special because that's where the Pope was. But to declare that it's such a young church, the uh, higher even than the oldest churches in Christianity, it was, at that point in time, the seat of the Roman Empire. But ever since, Const ever since uh, Emperor Constantine moved the, basically the government and the seat of power from this old Rome to the new Rome of Constantinople, the Eastern bishops started becoming quite powerful, and the, uh, the, and the other churches and Western churches did not like that. I mean, Rome did not approve of the demoting of the churches of Alexandria and Antioch in this. And troubles with the Church of Constantinople would continue to grow, for almost another almost 700 years before this before the great schism that's one of the so anyway that's the first council of constantinople in a nutshell if you like this video please give a like please share my videos please comment if you want to think of them any other videos you want to do please do subscribe to my channel so you, so you can see more of this content and please do ring the bell to keep up to date with my video releases next episode i'm going to be doing the council of Ephesus, in which we see the rise of the heresy of nestorianism which is definitely one of the big heresies in the early church but that'll be for then so god bless you all see you in the next video comments until then